Good morning, everyone. Today is March the 25th, the Solemnity of the Annunciation of the Blessed uh, Virgin Mary. It's a Marian feast day that we celebrate during the season of Lent. So we take this moment together to consider Mary's role in Christ's own life. We turn to the Blessed Mother on this day as we consider our gathering. I'm happy to be able to come to you in this format. I know that uh, many of you have been requesting the opportunity to have a uh, mass broadcast here in the parish, and so I'm very grateful to Brett Oman and to others who have uh, helped us to facilitate this moment of coming together in prayer. I invite you now to take a moment to set aside whatever it is that you might be doing and to try to enter fully into this moment when we come together uh, to worship God. I'd ask you to take a moment now of silence. Please join in singing our entrance hymn, number 203, Immaculate Mary, number 203. Spirit. My brothers and sisters, we gather together in worship. And so we acknowledge our sins and we ask the Lord for his mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the public. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Now, Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O oh God, who will that your word should take on the reality of human flesh in the womb of the Virgin Mary, grant, we pray, that we who confess our Redeemer to be God and man may merit to become partakers even in his divine nature, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahab, saying, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God. Let it be deep as the netherworld, or high as the sky. But Ahab answered, I will not ask. I will not come to the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, O house of David, is it not enough for you to weary people? Must you also weary my God? Therefore the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. For this reason, 
when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. In holocausts and sin offerings you took no delight. Then I said, As is written of me in the scroll, Behold, I come to do your will, O God. First Christ says, Sacrifices and offerings, holocausts and sin offerings, you neither desire nor delight again. These are offered according to the law. Then he says, Behold, I come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second. By this will we have been consecrated through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. Coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But Mary was greatly troubled at what was said, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus, for he will be great, and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. Of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have had no relations with a man? The angel said to her in reply, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As I mentioned at the beginning of Mass, this morning, I'm very grateful for all of those who helped to provide this moment of outreach for the Holy Eucharist and our celebration of Mass here at St. John of Arc. I know that all of us together are praying with and for one another at this time, and I can't express to you enough how important it is for me to have this opportunity to really be with you spiritually as your pastor as we come together in prayer. We celebrate by circumstance every March the 25th, which falls usually sometime in uh, the middle of the Lenten season, the solemnity of the Annunciation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. 
It is when the angel Gabriel comes to her and informs her that God is asking her to be the mother of his son. It falls during Lent, and so we take a pause from our Lenten observances on this solemnity. It happens for three of uh, the liturgies during the Lenten season when we set aside our Lenten observances and we honor and celebrate the saints. Today is the Blessed Mother on March the 19th, just past is the great solemnity of St. Joseph, the husband of Mary, and for many parts of our world, March the 17th, when we honor St. Patrick, we take an opportunity to recognize the Mother of God and the saints of the Church who live their lives by doing God's will. Mary's yes is what brought about all that we celebrate today. It's an important yes, and I think it's worthy of our reflection, especially when we consider how much we have heard the word no in these days. No, uh, you can't go to school anymore. No, you can't go to work. No, you have to stay at least six feet apart. And it all has good purpose to keep us safe and to keep us healthy. But then if we perhaps put ourselves a little more within family life, we recognize that constantly hearing the word no, it can start to drain on us. And it's not an easy thing to change our routines and to live, even if we're separated by six feet, uh, so close to one another in family living. I think there's no yes to uh, God in this moment is important for us as we think about how much the word no has been a part of our lives these last several weeks. I'd encourage all of us to really think about Mary's yes to God. She didn't exactly know what she was getting into or what it would involve or what it meant, but she was disposed by her own life of faith to trust God. And that's exactly what we're called to do today. To trust God in these days when we cannot gather together personally and we have to find new and creative ways to come together in our prayer life and in our faith life so that we don't lose sight of God's presence. We have the opportunity today as we come together to celebrate in worship our own yes to God and that may these days be one in which we can continue to experience the closeness of Christ in our lives. At uh, Mass, we would normally receive Holy Communion, but that's not an option to us under the current circumstances. And so, in the great tradition of the Church, there's a, a, a phrase that we use in terms of uh, making a spiritual communion. We try to express our abilities to be present to one another, and we might turn to God too, certainly the questions we don't understand, as Mary didn't, the fullness of the message that was revealed to her, but nonetheless, she was open to God's will in her life. In these days especially, I think it's important for us to consider that yes, and how we're living out our life of faith together. I'm grateful for the opportunity uh, to be with you, to celebrate this great feast, and I'm grateful for those who have helped uh, to put it together today. On the solemnity of the Assumption, we pray the creeds together, what we believe, and I will genuflect and pause at the sign of reverence. Normally, we're invited to bow our heads, but on this day, and Christmas Day, we stop and kneel in honor of the reverence that comes from Christ becoming one like us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things Thank visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. Born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from true God, begotten, not made, 
consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For our and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, as by the Holy Spirit, was in front of the virgin Mary, and became a man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism with the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we now turn to the Lord and offer our prayers and needs. For Pope Francis, Cardinal Kupich, and for all spiritual leaders during this time of uncertainty and fear. Lord, guide their words and deeds so that they may help us to feel your presence. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For those infected with the virus and all who are ill, Lord, place your healing hand on those who suffer illness. Bring them to full health and ease their anxious hearts. May our prayer and the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary encourage them that they are not alone. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For health care workers and those attending to the sick, Lord, we are ennobled by those who put their lives at risk in caring for the sick. Keep them safe and embolden them when they are weary. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For first responders and essential workers, Lord, remember those who run toward danger to keep us safe and those who serve the common good. Embrace them with your mantle of protection and comfort the fears of their families. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For people of every nation and their leaders, Lord, this pandemic opens our eyes to see each other as brothers and sisters in one human family. We pray for people of every nation and their leaders, asking that they be inspired to seek the good of all and quell the voices of division. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially the prisoners Anna Moscow and Bautista Santos, and for Marjorie McDermott and Helena Kaskowska, for whom this Mass is offered. Lord, we commend all who have died to your tender mercy, confident that nothing, not even death, will separate us from your love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. Loving God, hear the voice of your people raising prayer this day. Grant all that we ask of you in faith, and we offer together now a prayer in honor of the Mother of our Lord. And we say together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our life. Amen.
the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Almighty God, to accept your church's offering, so that she who is aware of her beginnings, lies in the incarnation of your only begotten Son, may rejoice to celebrate his mystery on this solemnity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for the Virgin Mary heard with faith that the Christ was to be born among men, and for men to save by the overshadowing power of the Holy Spirit. Lovingly, she bore him in her immaculate womb, that the promises to the children of Israel might come about, and the hope of nations be accomplished beyond all count. Through him the hosts of angels adore your majesty, and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices we pray join with theirs, in one chorus of exultant praise that together we acclaim. Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, 
may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your tonight. Especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, your spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on this constant intercession in your presence, we rely upon a failing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation be prayed, O Lord, and hence the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and place the order of bishops, the order of bishops of the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you as they're passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. May we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow upon the world all that is good. Through him we demand in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all of our kingdoms are restored forever and ever. your spirit. Enter under my roof. 
could only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Although you're not able to receive Holy Communion, there is a prayer that the priest says quietly before he receives Holy Communion, and it's here in our Roman Missal. And I'd like to pray it out loud for you, because it is a moment of spiritual communion for all of us as we listen to these words. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death, you gave life to the world. Free me now by this, your most holy body and blood, from all my sin and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments, and never let me be parted from you. Loving God, through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we have partaken of the body and blood of your Son. Help us now to live faithfully in you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. To all of our students at the Academy, and we'll continue religious education here within the parish, uh, there's a little bit of clue to uh, Mary's yes that you might find in the statue of the Blessed Mother here at the church. And uh, uh, speaking with Mrs. Reyes here as head of school, she's going to uh, allow an out of uh, uniform day for each of the grades. All you have to do is be the first student in your grade to uh, let your teacher know what that clue is and what it represents. So hopefully during that you might have noticed it. Uh, uh, if not, well done, we'll try again when we're reconvened and uh, uh, see what you can do. But know that very much we're thinking of you during these days, and I hope that your e-learning experience is going well for you. Now I'd just uh, invite uh, Mr. C. King, who's the president of the Academy, uh, to say a few words to all of you. Thank you. Thanks, Father. Well, it's been one week since we instituted our e-learning protocol, and i got to say I'm just so impressed by the response from the Academy community. Like with all things, 
distinction of art has been that wonderful combination of action and calm. And uh, certainly, Christina and her team, I think, have done a phenomenal job. They, they were prepared and they were very engaged in e learning, you know, one weekend. But also, I think it's important to acknowledge and thank you, the parents, and the school children for their willingness to you know, adapt and engage in this new learning modality. Uh, very, very impressive. We announced this closing of the school building March 13th, and at the time said that our expectation is that the school will be closed until April 20th. And that's where we stand today. Uh, we don't have any updates of that. Clearly, the whole coronavirus epidemic is a very dynamic and rapidly evolving situation. So as we learn more, if there is any change to that April 20th start date, we will communicate that as soon as possible. And speaking of communication, we've always believed that the critical component of success is something that we at the Academy pride ourselves in, and, and certainly at no time is more important than now during the e-learning period. Um, so expect to hear regularly, I think you probably already have, regularly from your teachers, from Christina, um, and there will be ongoing communication. I think though it's really important always, but particularly again now, and this communication will be two-way. Um, certainly, there will have to be some mid-course corrections as we go. We'll make mistakes, there's no doubt about that. And so we're counting on you, parents and school families, to let us know of opportunities for improvement and how we can do our job better. You know, certainly, educating uh, children is always a shared uh, effort between schools and parents, and that is um, never more true than today. So, um, in that spirit of cooperation, we look forward to your feedback. Your teachers and Christina are, are always the first line, but on behalf of the board, feel free to reach out to me or any board members with any comments, questions, or suggestions. Um, on the healthcare front, we learned just last night that our first student has been infected with the coronavirus. She lives with two parents who also um, are infected. We've had two other uh, parents that we know of in the community who also have been infected. This is uh, no reason for alarm. It was frankly an inevitability that this virus would hit our community. Um, those who have been infected are doing exactly the right things. They're following the healthcare protocols and the quarantines. And so we hope and expect frankly, that they will have a full and rapid recovery. And needless to say, our prayers, all of our prayers, are with them uh, that they do experience that quick recovery. I don't know about all of you, but for me, my faith has always been a real source of comfort, and particularly during times of uncertainty like this. And I want to thank, in, in that spirit, Father Anderson for his willingness to celebrate his Mass, for his spiritual leadership for our community and for reminding us that hope is just such a foundational bedrock of our faith. In closing, I certainly would be remiss if I didn't remind school families who haven't done so yet to register your kids for next year. We, <laughs> uh, Carolina, well. um, we had such wonderful momentum for this outbreak, both with existing school family registrations and with a bunch of new uh, family registrations. So let's keep the momentum up. It's very helpful for our planning to know those enrollment numbers. So thank you for that. You know, we'd like to say in my family that, that life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you respond to it. And as we kind of said at the onset, this community has responded so well. And I have to believe that that coming together to overcome an obstacle will lead us to a stronger place when this is done. So God bless you and your families, and in literally all sense, be well. And remember that we are all in this together. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Now may God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Master, thank you.
the gold king. Thanks Amen. be to God. As we're sent forth, please join in singing our closing hymn, number 261, I Will Choose Christ, number 261. Thank you.